Okay. Let's see. Let's get this right here. And I will start welcoming everybody when you come in. We got two people in, I think. Oh, it's so hot out. Just this camera. Let's see here. Hello, I'm just adjusting my camera, guys. See what we got. Mm, it's a little better. Hey, everybody. Let me get this camera set up right here. Let's go up a little higher. Mm. Running a little late. I will get it going in a minute. Let me see. Is that going to be better? Hmm. Tilt this a little bit. I think that's going to work. That's the furthest I can drop it down. I apologize. Just give me a few minutes. Now, crazy. I'm just going to have to sit up. Hello, Gina from Maryland. Mm. Hey, everybody. I think I'm still a little early, so. I don't know what's happening here. Oh, yeah. This failed the other day. So it's off a little. Hi, Stacy, all the way from California. Mm. I'll welcome everybody in just a second. Yeah, when my grandkids were here the mm. other day, my tripod fell. I think it may be broke, but I'll be able to just get into a position where to work today. Yeah, that came all the way off. Okay, it seems pretty stable now. 
man, I'll just sit up. Yeah, my tripod kind of broke. It's 100 degrees, guys. And the air condition is just going, going, and going, and barely stopping. So, I want to thank you all for coming in. Turn the sound down off of my laptop. Okay, can you guys hear me? I'm not getting any sound. Okay. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I've got about four minutes before I meet my deadline to be um on and up and started before so 6 45. yes you can hear me you can see me hey mama sister daughter hi no better tv hello cam p nature nine and family lisa j Thank you all very much for coming in today. What's wrong with this crazy thing? Tell you what, I'm going to go get a book. No, if it goes up, you won't see. It needs to go down. Let me collapse it a little. Crazy. Okay, I'm just gonna have to sit up. <laughs> YouTube Studio. Videos. Life. Hello, Little Beans Garden. Hello, Rachel Evans Dixon. Hi, Elizabeth Video Honey and Marie Sia. If I'm not pronouncing your names right, guys, I apologize. Hello, Smith Family Garden. I think I mentioned your name before. Okay, great. Okay, it's 643. If anybody have a gardening question, can you please, please put it in all caps? And we'll do the question and answer session uh, until 7 o'clock. And then I'm going to give you my... A brief review on canning and then I'm going to give you guys my 10 top canning tips thank you miss candlelight you know I haven't been anywhere since uh, the last of February other than to my daughter's house, a quick little vacation, and my doctor's appointment was virtual, can't go to church, so I just put a few clothes on on Monday night. <laughs> Hi, Deborah Moody. Is it too late to plant okra in 7B? 
I would think so, unless you have a greenhouse. I'm in 8A, and I wouldn't plant any okra right now. So, yes. How often do you water your sweet potatoes in 8A? About every two to three days, unless it rains. And we haven't been getting any rain in a couple of weeks, so I water them about every two to three days, because mine are in a large container. So it, that also depends on the size of your container. If your container is um, like a five-gallon bucket, you may need to water them every day. Mine are in... 17-gallon uh, buckets, and one tote is 29 gallons, and one tote is 30 gallons. So they hold a lot of water. Now, when you first plant slips, you got to water them a little bit every day. But after they get started, and I've got a lot of vines, um, so I don't need to water mine that often. Okay, I'm going to still try to play with this a little bit because this is crazy. Why is it sitting up so high? Let's try it like that. Doggone it. Oh, wait a minute. I think I got it. Hey, now, I got it. I got it. I've got it. I got it. I got it. <clears throat> Something about the Holy Ghost. I just can't explain it, but I got it. <laughs> okay, let's go to the next question. Just a minute. Okay, I'm dealing with cabbage worms. What are some tips? Pick them off. I know it sounds horrendous. If you can't stand them, get a piece of tape and try to pick them up with the tape with a glove. But I've gotten to the point. Thank you, Elizabeth. I've gotten to the point where I can just pick them off. Because it depends on where you live. I don't believe in insecticides and pesticides. And it's too hot to be spraying neem oil and BT and all that stuff. So I just pick them off at this point. So those are the tips that I'm going to give you, Emilio. Watch them carefully and pick them off. How often do you water sweet potatoes? I got that. Thank you, mama, sister, daughter. I'm glad you're here. Is it too late to plant beans in 8A? No, it's not. We have a longer growing season. It's not too late to plant string beans, green beans, or crowded peas, cow peas. They take a lot of heat. Thank you, Stinky Puddle Ranch. How do you repel stray cats and dogs without a fence? Do you use coffee grounds work? I don't know, guys. I've been in this home for 30 years, and I have a privacy fence. Cats can still jump over the fence. So I put, like, uh, red pepper flakes around. They don't like that. Uh, so that's the only thing I can um, recommend to you, Lonnie. And then they have um, some pest deterrents, uh, like rodents be gone. It, it will sting the nostrils of the cats and the dogs, but it won't kill them. So you may want to try that. You can go ahead and look up my video for um, my playlist for uh, insects and pests. Okay? Okay, I asked you the question about the cabbage worms. When you dump out the... Oh, good question, Gina. When do you dump out containers of sweet potatoes? Try to grow them as long as you can, but you must harvest them before the first frost because the leaves will die and your plant, uh, potatoes can get damaged. Any temperature, 32 and below. So you can count back to when you planted them. And I want to say they need between 120 and 170 days to grow, depending on where you are. I'm going from memory, so don't hold me um, 
uh, a scripture on that, but check with the uh, farmer's almanac. Okay? Now, now, white potatoes, you can harvest them a little bit sooner. Because some people harvest the, like, the little green ones. I'm not green. Don't eat green potatoes. That's poisonous, toxic. Um, like the little bitty spring potatoes. Uh, some people won't even let them get real mature. Okay. Uh, why? Somebody, construction and farm. You're new. I think I don't remember seeing your, um, your handle or your name of your... Uh, YouTube name, but next time put your questions in all caps. I'm 66 years old and I don't see real well. Do you know what plant can be planted among cabbage as a cabbage moth repellent? Can't think right now. I'm drawing a blank. Check with Farmer's Almanac. As a cabbage. Uh, Mary goes. Mary goes. You can plant Mary goes. When will I know it's time? But marigolds will not last past the freeze. When will I know? Oh, you are already answered that. Okay, Erica, is it okay to replace a determinate tomato plant with an indeterminate or plant something? Else? You could, you could, yeah. Anytime you pull your plants up, you can plant anything you want. I don't recommend planting tomatoes in the same spot. If you've grown it all spring and summer and you're gonna plant some in the fall, I recommend that you either take half of that potting soil off out if it's a container and, and replenish it with new potting mix and, and uh, compost if you have it. But if you're planting in a garden bed or in the ground, you need to rotate because the tomato plant took most of the nutrition out. So I don't plant in the same spot anything uh, from season to season. How much fertilizer for sweet potatoes? I don't use fertilizer, um, May Rainer. I use organic fertilizers like bone meal. And by the way, I'm out of bone meal and I've never used blood meal. And I went online. I went on Amazon. They had it, but it, it's so expensive. I checked Lowe's. I checked Home Depot doesn't have any. And the few places that have it in my area, uh, they have gone up in the price. They have gouged the price. So if you're lucky, or I should say blessed to obtain some uh, bone meal and blood meal for your fall garden and it's reasonably priced, I, I recommend that you buy some and put it up, okay? So Ray, uh, Rainer, May Rainer, to answer your question, I give it compost. I give it fertilizing uh, comfrey fertilizer that I make from what I grow and ferment it. I give them worm castings if I have it. I don't have any right now because my emergency garden uh, depleted all of my soil amendments right now. And um, you can also give it some weed tea. So you can like pull the weeds up or grass when you mow your lawn, put it in a five gallon container Fill it up. Rainwater is best because it doesn't have chlorine in it. Let it ferment, and you can feed all of your plants that. Strain it so you won't have any, you know, weed seeds or things like that, especially if you do it in the uh, spring of the year uh, when the grass is growing. But I tell everybody, I don't use fertilizers. Only fertilizers I use are organic. Okay, next question. When do we know cucumbers when do we know cucumbers are ready to be harvested they can be harvested at any time Deborah Moody you don't want them to get too fat because the seeds are going to uh, grow and expand and it doesn't taste really good and whatever you do unless you're growing a um, lemon cucumber don't let them get yellow a couple of them got away from me when I went on vacation and when I came back, I thought I had harvested them all. A couple days later, I had a cucumber that big. In fact, I showed it to my subscribers in one of my lives. They don't taste as well. I'm not saying you can't eat them because you can 
you know, cut them up real thin, remove some of the seeds, and you could put vinegar, you know, and do a little dressing. But they don't taste as good uh, when they're yellow, unless they're lemon cucumbers, and they don't make good pickles. So you can harvest them when they're real little, when you want many, many jerkins and many uh, pickles. It's just cucumbers harvested small. Some of it could be varieties that grow small, but not necessarily. Okay, we'll move on to the next question in all caps. Okay, didn't know if it would not water often. Yes, there are in totes, but not plenty of vines. Put salt, but, but, I think that's but salt potatoes on the top. Okay, if you see any potatoes on the top, two videos ago, I noticed I had a sweet potato that somehow grew close to the top. And you'll see me in that video that I spread, I took a container that I didn't have any spider mites or any other type of uh, insects. And I used that potty mix in that container and I uh, built the soil up around that potato. You do not want your potatoes to be exposed. Okay, they'll turn green and that's not good. Okay, I think I've answered that question. Hey, Stan, good to see you. I call you Stan the man. When do you harvest celery? Anytime. You, you know, you can wait until you get a really good stalk of celery or you can harvest it when it's leafy. Uh, that's up to you. There's no, there's no uh, right or wrong whenever you need it, okay? Rachel Evans Dixon, you in business now. Uh, are you talking about my product line? Well, I, I think that's what you're talking about. Thank you, Nature9, for saying my voice. She likes my voice. Cats are good for rodents control. Yes, if the truck stops rolling. Unfortunately, I don't like pets. And don't get me wrong. I am sympathetic to people who have pets especially when their pets get hurt or when they die, I understand. But I have a little phobia. And it stems from the fact that when I was eight years old, a German shepherd took a plug out of my behind. And back in those days, the dog, they call them dog catchers. They call it animal control now. They would have to find the dog and test the dog to make sure that the dog didn't have rabies. And so we're talking you know, 50 something years ago. And, and if you, they couldn't check, uh, check the dog and see if it had rabies, you would have to get 29 uh, shots in your navel to prevent you from getting rabies. So that has something to do with me not wanting to have pets. And I grew up in a house where we had German shepherds outside and every dog we had, when he died, we, we get another one, a black full blood German Shepherd, and we named him King. All of our dogs were named King. I didn't play with King. I liked and loved King, but I never got that bonding that some people have with pets when they're children. So I have been told that I need to get feral cats because this is the first year that I've had rodent problems. And it is because, and my son-in-law and my uh, son and I were all discussing this the other day, we have a lot of um, businesses that are popping up in, in my neighborhood where I live, in the town, the city, and they're putting these businesses on land, uh, what is the word, that hasn't been excavated, you know, woody areas. And so some of these rodents, possum, opossums, possums, and, and mice and rats and stuff are coming in, squirrels and fox, because I saw one on the ring video camera, uh, my neighbor. And uh, they're coming in into the suburb to look for food because their natural habitats are being uh, torn down. So yeah, so that's, that's what's going on. So cats are good for rodent control, but I don't want to be dealing with cats. I'm sorry. Hello, Miss Grando. Hi, Gina. Can you still go on, grow corn now? I don't know where you live. If you're out in uh, 
California or Florida, you can. Uh, a climate that is, um, that has at least 100 days of more warm weather, weather that's above 75 degrees. Turn this fan on. You can, but um, I wouldn't recommend it for zones 8 on down. Because it's going to get cool. I grew up in Indiana, so I know, you know, by, th by um, Halloween, it's, it gets cool. And you always, if the truck stops rolling, you can always go to FarmersAlmanac.com. Put in your zip code. And it will direct you to what you can grow, when you can grow it, how many days you need to grow it, and how to grow it. I think I said everything. Hi, Angela. So good to see you. Laughing. Don't eat free potatoes. I don't know what you're talking about, Elizabeth, unless you're talking to somebody else. VD honey, honey, petunias. I'm not getting it. You're, you're all having a conversation. Thank you, Ms. Grando. All caps for these questions. Thank you for replying to me. Okay, great. I'll be planting marigolds. Oh, you're welcome. I really enjoy these lives. And while I'm here, let me tell you, for some of the guys, you might not want to be in my live next Monday because I'm going to give you a little history about my product line how I started developing them. My uh, website will go live on the 20th. And I think next Monday is the 17th. So I'm gonna give you guys a little sneak peek of the line. Um, I'm gonna debut with only five products. When I had to have thyroid surgery uh, six years ago, I was selling over 150 products. And, and contrary to popular belief, the, the website looked like it was a whole lot of people helping me, but it was just me, and I couldn't do it anymore. And now my health has improved tremendously, tremendously, thank God, and I'm relaunching the line on the 20th. So my next live chat will be about product knowledge. I'll tell you about how I started developing the products, how I used to make them for friends and family when they had skin issues and how my, my hair customers encouraged me to start selling them. So, um, yeah, this is not nothing new. I'm just taking my five top products and I'm starting off real slow. And I have a granddaughter who is uh, next month, she'll be 15. And, uh, and if it takes off, then she will be helping me. Okay. Somebody is mentioning something. It's out in most places. Okay, that must be the blood meal. Okay. Yes, get that blood meal. And, and if you use uh, bone meal, get it as soon as you can. Stinky Poodle Ranch. Best yet, I am in zone 8A. Can I start? Yes! You in my zone, best yet. My last two videos, maybe three, I showed you guys. I'm doing a series on how I'm starting my seeds. They're right outside my patio door, and I have them covered with shade. Actually, I can take the shade cloths off of them now. Okay? Um, yeah, so you can start now, best yet. All big box stores, small stores are all low on products yes i haven't been able to get black cow um compost since um march in my area okay what's a good price for bone milk man it used to be less than seven dollars now it's like 29 dollars on amazon but you know amazon have independent um merchants you know and they can't control the price gouging Okay. Do you still use underground containers to water your garden? Underground. Oh, the Olas. Oh, yes. The unglazed uh, clay pots. Oh, yes. I use, uh, I'm use, only using two of them right now because I pulled up all of the uh, plants. Um, 
in the emergency garden, those two garden beds. But I still have a couple of pepper plants, sweet pepper plants. Yes, I use the Olas. Yes, yes, yes. Especially right now because we have 100 degree temperature. It's too hot. After about 9.30, I can't work outside because it's just... If you know anybody that know anything about thyroid issue, you can't be out in the sun a long time. Your body can't get overheated, too. Okay. Okay. Kifa. I think I'm pronouncing your name right. Hi, all. Blood slash bone meal are constantly in and out of stock here. I to keep trying until I found some back in June. Same with perlite and vermiculite. Pea moss and other things like that. Yes, guys, it's a whole lot of people gardening right now uh, because of the pandemic. CB Phillips, hi, Cheryl. You inspired me to garden. I'm a first-year gardener, and I planted collards, tomatoes. Just making me smile. Just warms my heart. Sweet potatoes, corn, and eggplant. Bless you. I am so happy for you, CB. Homesteading with Essie is in here. Hey, how you doing, sweetie? Erica Jones, what are your thoughts on drip irrigation? I'm tired of hand watering. I think it's wonderful. I, I see a lot of people doing it, but I personally like to hand water. I like to dip the water out of my rain barrels. I don't like bending down with the spouts. I'm using 55 gallon drums. I've got some expensive rain barrels at the back of my food forest. I don't even care if they get repaired. Um, I like dipping it out and walking around and, and watering it. But if it gets really hot when it's like 90 degrees in the morning, then I'll go ahead and use my water hose. But I think drip irrigation is smart. It's neat. It's wonderful people that work outside of the home. But me, since I'm retired, I actually get my exercise that way. I love to eat. And if I didn't do a lot of exercise, I would be a much heavier woman. So I would get my exercise on for about two hours, watering everything. And also, it uh, gives me the opportunity to inspect my plants. I can stay on top of infestations when I'm walking around and watering and inspecting every day. See, I didn't have any problems with anything until I went on vacation. And when I came back, everything appeared to be okay, but those uh, squash vine borders had creeped into my squash and I didn't catch it in time because I have BT. I think it's called back tip, back something, thrillers or whatever. It's called BT. And you can inject it into the stems of those vines and kill those borders, but I didn't catch it in time. Also, I had a spider mite infestation that I didn't catch in time. But now that I'm back on my routine since I've been back on vacation and walk around looking at everything, I catch it every day. I mean, I catch everything by doing that every day. Now, I don't water everything every day. Some plants I don't water every day, but I still walk around and check them all out. That's how I know I got aronia berries. That's how I know, knew that I have some rodents coming in eating my apples, eating my eggplant. So, yeah. Things don't really sneak up on me until I go on vacation. Okay. No. Oh, you want to know the story about the rabies shot? Thank you. Because, uh, girl, my, I don't know if it's a man or woman. Better, no, no better TV. Sometimes you, my senior citizen brain will start rambling on and I'll forget to finish the story. No, they got the dog just in time and checked for rabies and I didn't have to have the shots. But I had to get uh, a lot of stitches in my behind. I mean, it took a plug out of me. Someday I'll tell you the end of that I'm going to tell you right now the end of that story my brother got the dog he you know lured him in with food but what the dog didn't know my mother was a seamstress a tailorer and she, he put I'm bending down because I use my hands and visuals when I'm telling the story and he put pins all in the bottom of his bag uh, pa uh, uh, pant legs straight pins and then he lured the dog in with the food, food, and then he wouldn't give it to him, and the dog went, rrr, rrr. <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell you this, but that dog didn't bite nobody after that because <laughs> he had really got damaged. 
that probably was cruel, but my, my brother was young. I was eight, so that means he was nine or ten. So that's the end of the story. No, I didn't have to get the rapey shots. Thank you, Elizabeth. After you get bit, it makes a big difference. But, you know, like, I love watching and Elizabeth, and I know you watch him too, Peanut Pepper. I'm going to shout him out today, guys. In a previous mess in world, in a previous life, he had to be a veterinarian. Because this man raising chickens, ducks. He's now took in a, sh uh, a goat who was attacked by a pack of dogs and the dog... He takes him to the vet. He knows everything about these animals. And to me, I don't even get off on, uh, I don't like animals per se myself, but I find it very soothing watching how somebody loves and care for animals. Peanut Peppers, check out, he's a small channel. And he uh, makes pepper sauce and pepper jelly and things like that. But I love watching how he takes care of animals. And I keep asking my sister, do you think if I got a little cat, I can, you know, maybe force myself? But I don't think I can. Thank you, Miss uh, Grando. Appreciate you taking care of that. I uh, just I hear the user from the channel. Now, let's go with, um, I have had my cat for nine years, and she has earned her keep, Talita. Yes, and I understand, and I've seen you care for your animals, Talita. Beautiful. Hi, Lady Cheryl and everybody in the chat. Thank you, Mary, for being here. Okay. Hey, Lolita. Thank you, everybody, I'm glad you're here. Okay, here we go. How soon after your seeds sprout do you start watering them from the bottom? Immediately. Immediately. Uh, I guess I didn't make that clear because if you know I do that, you watch my video, Lolita. Yes, as soon as they pop up, I start making those roots reach down to get water. And believe it or not, it makes your seedlings grow faster and stronger, those roots. Uh, you all remember Lad Farmer 73 in one of his lives, he was talking about, um, he was telling somebody how you save a lemon tree. He said, starve it. The tree was about to die. And I just laughed because I know what he meant because it's the same concept that I do with my seedlings. I don't let them dry out now in 100 degree weather. Don't get me wrong. But if you hold that water back a little bit and they reach for it, they get stronger. So he was saying about don't water the tree for a week or two or whatever it was. The lady's tree was dying because he had did it before. And then all of a sudden he flooded it with water and the tree just came back. It was like, oh, I'm thirsty. Thirsty, thirsty, I'm about to die. And then when it got the water, it, it shocked the tree and it made the tree become vibrant again. And another thing about watering your plants from the bottom, you won't have all those fungus gnats because you guys know that I got the little rodent problem, right? So I brought a gardening table at the back door and I'm bringing my seedlings in at night because two videos ago, I shared with you guys how these little rodents, I think it might be a mouse or a rat, but then when they ate the eggplant, it seemed like it was bigger teeth. But they ate the tops off of my beets because they were sweet. And they were, um, what do they call it, choosy eaters? <laughs> they didn't eat the collards or the kale or uh, mustard greens. They ate the tops off of all the beets, and I had to reseed them. And so they are getting really, really strong. And right now I have over 70 cups that I showed you in my last video that I use a clear cup and then a red cup. And I just put that water across the top for one time so that I don't get a lot of uh, fungus nets. And that's how my mind wanders. I was telling you how the table at the back door, I'm, because of the rodent issue, I'm bringing the seedlings in. I don't want 
fungus gnats to come into my home. So I'm watering from the bottom. I watered everything this morning, just a little water at the bottom. You might think, you might get tempted and want to water from the top, but I'm telling you, you'll have more success if you water from the bottom up. Okay, so now we'll take another question. Hey, Ernestine, or uh, uh, Ernest Hall, I don't know how I pronounce your name, but when you comment on my videos and I'm reading it, I've renamed you Ernestine, but I know it's not. It looks like it's Ernest. Okay, green potatoes, ma'am, don't eat those. Petunias, oh, got you, got you, um, got you, Elizabeth. Whoever asked that question about the cabbage worm, she's saying plant some petunias, and I do remember that. And another good thing when I was telling you about the green to, to, uh, potatoes are toxic, she was reminding you guys, don't eat the green potatoes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Elizabeth. You are what is called a hype woman. You know, the rappers, they have so many lyrics that they have to remember, the rhymes, and so they have a, a hype man on the stage with them, yeah, yeah, one time, and a feel the, mm, mm, that's what a hype man person, so Elizabeth's my hype, hype lady. Okay. Is green organic love in the house? I didn't see her come in. Is green organic love in the house? Okay, while I'm waiting for it to come in, I see somebody's got, what do you think about dry canning? I think it's wonderful. Um, however, I don't do any dry canning because it's me, just me. I'm a widow. My children are all grown, have their own household and children. So I don't need to st store up food like that in bulk. Homestead Heart is another uh, canning channel. If you all haven't checked her out, Homestead Heart. She does a lot of canning, and I've seen her dry can goods. And while I'm on this subject of other uh, sites, I want to bring one to your attention. Mama, Sister, Daughter. She has been doing some phenomenal canning. Check her channel out. Mama, Sister, Daughter daughter everybody got that check her out mama sister daughter how are you okay green organic love my daughter my youtube daughter is in here mama sister daughter i saw a couple of her canning videos this weekend i was very impressed and i said i'm going to shout that young lady out because she everything that she said i agree with and it's very rare that i agree with somebody 100 percent so, and it's no competition out here for canning, for gardening. Get as many resources as you can. And if you're thinking about doing something just because somebody else is doing it, don't you stop doing it. There are other people selling natural products. I'm not going to stop doing something that I've been making since 1992. God has blessed my health to get better. He's telling me this is what I need to do. It's no competition to no one. Learn all that you can from everybody. So please check out Mama, Sister, Daughter. And I've already mentioned a lot of times, Homestead Heart. Now you probably think like, why is she telling people to go to other channels that she do candy? I'm not selfish. But see, I know where my blessings come from. None of you all can take whatever God has in store for me away from me. I have people who stop coming to my channel, watching my videos, and commenting that used to comment all the time because my channel started growing. It's just the way it is. But I'm not like that. If I see somebody that's going to help somebody, more power to them. I'm going to shout you out. And while I'm at it, let me just show you all something. You all don't have to tell me I look cute with these glasses. Cause I know I do. Tell me I look like I'm 66 and I'll tell you something's wrong with you. Am I right about it? I know I'm right about it. My YouTube daughter, Green Organic Love, has got it going on. 
These came from her website, guys. Are they not cute? I have a daughter that's 43 years old. She is not going to see me with these glasses because she's going to try to get them. She better go to the website. Check these out. Tell me I look like I'm 66 and I say you're blind or crazy. Aren't these tough? Beautiful. Sharp. And this is me, guys. You all see that leopard print? This is me. And the girl is bad. Check out her cases. The website is TisaReneeGreen.com. Her YouTube channel is Green Organic Love. Look at the box these glasses came in, guys. The presentation is just awesome. We need to support one another in this gardening community. Time out for getting jealous of people. They got more subscribers than me. I'm not going to watch her anymore. Time out for all that. Shame on you if you're one of those people that do that. And go in and start marking, putting thumbs down. If somebody thumbs down my little grandbabies. I'm gonna like, dang, that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Haters going to hate. Isn't that gorgeous? Tisa Renee Green. Dot com. Check this out, guys. I got all kind of mask. Beautiful, comfortable, because it's stretch. And if it's too big for you, you can loop it. This young lady is doing it. If I'm wear black and white with a pop of blue, you can't tell me nothing. And my grandson, my, my granddaughter, love this one. Brian, you all know him. He's in my video. He want these. It's all, oh, baby, no. You better ask your mother to order some. <laughs> Aren't they nice? But this, out of everything that I got, is this. These are me. I would love these if I could afford them in prescription glasses. <laughs> you all see my regular glasses, so you know this. These are my regular glasses, but I'm nearsighted, so I can't see. Here's the camera here. Here's my laptop here. I can't see with my glasses on close up because I'm nearsighted. But everybody, please green organic love. You don't have to thank me, baby. I'm just telling it like it is, but that's sweet of you. Please put your website, and if it won't let you do it, I'll prove it. Put a link to your website. And I will put it in the description box as well. But I think you can link it right here, right now. Let's support our own. And when I say our own, I'm not talking about race. I'm talking about our gardening community. Support each other. And now, let me share something with you. I don't know if the lady is in here, so I'm not going to call her name. Yeah, there it is. TisaGreen.com, everybody. Uh, you all know I did only one, one uh, pressure canning uh, consultation, and I don't charge no money, on Zoom. But you know you got to play for that. So I set up freeconferencecall.com. And Saturday for three hours, I helped two ladies with their first pressure canning procedure on the conference call. And I tell you guys to email me. Um, turf therapy? Yes, I agree with you. Her presentation is awesome. He's talking about Tisa's. TisaGreen.com. Uh, turf Therapy, please put down my uh, email address. It's Cheryl, C H E R Y L, Moss, 0875 at yahoo.com. Now, once my line takes off, I'm not going to be able to do these consultations. So I'm asking you all, if you need any help, the Lord put this on my heart. Thank you. That's it. Mm-hmm. 
the Lord put this on my heart to help people. Lead Farmer 73 is the first person that told me to do this. Now, right now, I am not canning. You see me sweating? Of course, you know, I got my wig on. But I got my air conditioner set at 65, and it's still hot in here because it's hot outside. So I don't can. I will not be canning again until September, so I'm not going to have any videos. But these other ladies that are canning, that are in Malda Climbing's Homestead Heart and Mama, Sister, Daughter, check them out. I will start back canning, like I said, in September. So that leads me to... Oh, thank you. Hey, Proverbs Woman. Thank you so much. Yes, Carolyn Boy, we rise together, divided. We are defeated. Thank you so much. Martha Howard, please know that I don't always comment. I look at most of your videos working on my second batch of caramelized onions. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It just warms my heart. Hey, Clausen World. Hey, Missy Grando. And she shared the website with family and friends. Can P, did you find it? I don't know what you're saying, mama, sister, daughter. But you all need to screenshot that, uh, if you're on your cell phone, screenshot so you can go to her website. You used to can click on the person's icon, their picture, while you're doing a live, and it will go to the person's website. YouTube, stop that. So, and, then, and, and also the live chat comments won't immediately be on. They probably won't be on after this chat is over for a couple of hours. But uh, let's all support each other. Yes, Ma Ma Marina DeForest, I subscribe to Homestead Hard, really like her channel. Yes. And Lead Farmer 73, um, he's beginning to can and... I just love his um, enthusiasm and his uh, motivation to support other people. Because he was telling me a long time ago, about two years ago, to do more canning videos before the pandemic hit. But back then, when I would do a canning video, I'm going to be honest with you, nobody was hardly watching them. Not because the content wasn't good, people weren't into it. But now I try to go find some canners. And that leads me to my... Top 10 tips. I wrote them down for you. This is some artwork I'll let you know. see here. I was experimenting for my, my product line. There is a new canner out. Okay, let me get these two questions right here, and then I'll start. Miss Cheryl, when canning ground meat, does the meat have to be cooked prior to canning pro process, or will the canning process cook the meat thoroughly? Yes, it will. You girl, you know, it, it, you have to... You have to can, pressure can, any meat for 90 minutes. It doesn't take us 90 minutes to cook any meat. So anything that's raw in that jar will be cooked. The secret to canning meat when you raw pack it is you've got to press it down real good. And that's one of my top 10 tips. Very good question. Okay, Living Miracle Homestead. Yes, young lady, you have been on a canning spree because you were having some issues with your freezer so you had to you had to can everything yes uh kathy that's her name from living miracle homestead canning is very addictive says angela bolden should have started way before now yes so getting back to what i was saying when led asked me to do those videos i would do some of them and it's not that i didn't want to share i felt like when nobody wanted to see them but when that pandemic hit that canning took off. You can't hardly buy a canner now. Now, I found one and I posted it on the community board the other day. It was expensive, but if you can get a pressure, a pressure canner now or a water bath canner, you need to go ahead on and do it. Okay, let's talk. I'm going to ask a, these few more questions. Please, guys, no more questions because it's 728. I don't mean to be rude, but I usually start my presentation at 7 o'clock. But I wanted to be sure to shout out these people that uh, was on my heart. Um, how do I get rid of fungus gnats, those yellow sticky tabs? And the key is preventing them in the first place. 
don't water for the top from the top. They usually feast on the little um, seedlings, soil. So don't water from the top. And yeah, put those yellow sticky papers out. Okay. Clawson World found a can at Tractor Supply yesterday. I didn't purchase it because I didn't need another one. Very good, but you're letting us know where you they can go and get it. Canning is very addictive. Yes, it is. Somebody said they've been toying with the idea. You won't regret it because you know we're going to get another wave of this pandemic when flu season comes because we really haven't gotten over the, the wave, the first wave. I live in Texas where it is... It is out of control. And I pray for all of these parents. And I have three children. Well, actually, my daughter is a, an assistant principal. My son is a coach and a teacher. And his wife is a teacher. I think she's administrative over the department. But she still has contact with kids. And so that's three people in my immediate family out of six children and spouses that are educators. It's really dangerous, guys, these kids going back to school. You all know Bria, my daughter's do uh, daughter, that be in my videos. I will be homeschooling Bria, so pray for me. She's sweet as she could be. I don't know if I can keep up with the, <laughs> the technology and whatever, but I'm looking forward to it. And uh, my daughter, Elisa's husband, is a um, technical engineer. He puts all the systems, computer systems in hospitals and things like that. He's a project manager, and he works from home, so he's going to be homeschooling Brian. And then when, after, if the, if the pandemic s slows down some, then they'll go to school the next eight weeks, I think. But if it doesn't, they'll be out for a year, depending on what the parents want them to do. Love, love lady. Yes, yeah, starting on the 19th and nervous. Yeah, I, I'm praying every day. Okay. All right. I think I got all of the questions. All American has the canner uh, at Amazon, the 941 right now. What does it cost? The arm and the leg and the shoulder? <laughs> Ace Hardware. Thank you, Garden and Eden. Yes, I did check out Ace Hardware. Uh huh. And they are in. Okay. I homeschool Cheryl. It's an amazing journey. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mauricia. Okay, so now let's talk about a few things. A lot, most people, if you can homeschool these kids, I'm just, I'm just scared. I'm not scared because I know God is in control, but I am concerned about children bringing things home to the elderly but let's get off that subject Let, let's talk about this canning thing so i finally did some research about um I, uh this new wave canner it's a pressure cooker and a canning feature and it comes from um they they, they come in different sizes I think like six quarts, nine quarts, 12 quarts, and I think they have a 16 quart. And they cost an arm and a leg. And so people have been asking me about it. They've been emailing me. I have never used it. So I can't give you my advice, but I will tell you this. How many of you ever bought those three-in-one machines? Like it's a telephone, it's a fax, it's a copier, it's a printer. You know where I'm getting at. Anything to me that does more than one or two things, they tend to go out quick. So I don't want an electric pressure canner. I'm not saying that they're bad. I'm just saying if you're going to buy one, I would buy the individual pressure canner. I don't want these all three in ones and four in ones. Instant pot, pressure cooker, canner, or whatever. Jeannie's Farmhouse said it sounds like a good concept if it works. Yeah. 
when my copier went out, my fax machine went out. When the fax machine went out, I couldn't print anything. So I would prefer to have an individual pressure canner and any large pot that you can put uh, either a towel or a rack at the bottom uh, will work as a, a water bath canner. You don't have to have a water bath canner. You can use any big stock pot. Okay? Yes, Marina, when one thing goes wrong, the whole thing goes. I've, I've done it. I bought those. How many of you bought a TV that had the VCR in it and the DVD players? They don't last. So, if you want my advice, because you all, you, I get emails, and I don't mean to say this in a negative way. My advice is to buy them individually. Okay? All right. Now, I, I've already told you guys I won't be canning until uh, September because it's too hot. Now, the first tip I want to give you is, well, I gave you one of my opinion on those all-in-one. That's number one. And Living Miracle Home says she, says she has one they aren't made to can me. Yeah, so what's the point? If you can't do it, you can't, you can't can everything in it. What's the point? I don't understand. And they look, they were really expensive for a six quart one was um, $129. I'm going, to, okay, please. You can get you a Presto canner. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to harp on that. In New Zealand, our schools and everything are open. We have managed so far to contain COVID-19. The only new cases are people coming from overseas, mandatory quarantine in place. Wonderful. That's the same advice that I give people. Unicorn Lady Tech, same thing she tells people about buying computers. Don't buy 1A, has all his stuff, and it's just a computer and let no one all in one. Very good. Okay, so I'm, I'm not going to look at the screen anymore. I'm going to go down my list. So that's the top one advice. I don't believe in all in one. Get them separate. Number two, the National Center for Food Preservation now tells us since um, 2016 or 2013 that we don't have to sanitize the tops. Oh, thank you, Marinia. I hope I'm saying your name right. Thank you for the super chat. They telling us that we don't have to sanitize the lids and the jars anymore. Balls tell you you don't have to sanitize the lids. And the National Center for Food Preservation tell you that you don't have to sanitize the jars. And I'm going to give you my opinion on that. If you, if you boil in a, in a um, water bath canner or a pressure canner for over 10 minutes... I agree with them because my background in cosmetology, what I did for a living was to lecture sanitation, sterilization, the difference between disinfectants and sanitizers. And we had to use those autoclaves starting in the early 90s when the AIDS epidemic hit. It actually, it hit before, but it didn't hit the beauty schools uh, the way they changed, the way they sanitized things until the 90s. Okay? So all steel implements had to go into this autoclave. I think Larry Farmer was talking about it. Somebody was trying to pass off a, I call them autoclave. He said it was something else, but it really wasn't a pressure canner. And if you didn't do the fine reading, you, you were ordering the wrong thing. But they do sanitize. So why are you saying all of this, Ms. Cheryl? If you're comfortable that you washed your drawers with hot, soapy water, and you know you're going to pressure can them, then you don't have to put them in that boiling water for 10 minutes. That's what the National Center for Food Preservation tells us. I'm telling you that I still do it. But I do it an easier way. I have a dry heat cycle on my dishwasher. 
It's over 210 degrees, so it'll kill any, non, uh, any pathogenic bacteria or microbes. So you could do it in your dishwasher, or you can also do it by washing with soapy water, rinsing them very well, and then putting them upside down in your oven and turn your oven on to 250 for 10 minutes. And that would sanitize them. Okay? So to answer anybody's question or so that you don't be confused, the National Center for Preservation said that we don't have to sanitize the drummers anymore, but I do. But I don't dip mine in hot water anymore. I do it either in the dishwasher or in the oven. Are there any questions on that? Okay, that's tip one. Tip two, all jars, even if they are brand new, must be washed. I saw a video of a lady opened up the package of jars and put her food in there and water bath candy. Yes, grandma's, my YouTube daughter, Green Organic Love, says she does it the old fashioned way, just like grandmama and them did. I said that on purpose, grandmama and them. Yeah, they did it. But I, I, I do mine in the, uh, the uh, dishwasher because mine get real hot. I don't know what kind you all have, but mine get real. I mean, you open up that dishwasher, you, ooh, it's a lot of heat. Okay, and while I'm on that, wash your, your brand new jars. Don't assume that they are clean. No. And while I'm on that, balls recommend, this is number three, balls recommend that you don't even hit up the lids. And they only guarantee them for 18 months now. I warm my lids. I don't let them boil anymore. I bought one of those stove inductions so I can turn it on and as soon as it starts boiling, I turn it off and that just keeps them warm, okay? So yes, I do believe it in putting hot uh, water, not necessarily boiling water, on the lids. Okay, so that was number three. This is the number one thing I think that, and I learned this from, and I was talking earlier about, I helped coach two canners on the conference call. And that's why I asked Turf to put up my email. And I'm only gonna do this probably for a couple more weeks because once the line takes off, I'm gonna need my free time, guys, because I can't do things like I did when I was younger. I have to get a proper amount of rest. But I will still make myself available to you, providing that you email me and you guarantee me you're going to have everything ready prior to the call. Because the only thing I need to walk you through is putting the food in the pressure canner, loading it with water, going through the process, and then letting the canner uh, relieve itself of the pressure once you turn off the gas. Thanks again, Turf, for putting that up. So email me, and I'm only going to do this for a few more weeks, okay? But if you need me, I'll help you. I never did finish telling you all that story. The first lady was so nervous to finally, I had to say, hey, 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 calm down. <laughs> I promise you it's not going to blow. I'm just so scared it's going to blow up. Blah, 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 blah. You can hear it in a voice. It's not going to blow up. And... I think I have a gift, and I think my experience as being an educator, I was trained to teach a truck driver who has never picked up a comb or a brush. So I think I'm blessed that I can say things in a way real simple that you, you, you know, this is the apple. Cut the apple in half, that type of thing. And so when I got finished with her, and I'm not going to call her name out. She's on, I saw her name in the chat. She was, she calmed down. She was okay. She emailed me the other day and let me know that she had did like four or five other different things that she had pressure canned. So the first time may be a little scary for you, but 
it's a wonderful feeling when you know you have helped somebody and they, they have just taken off and just flying with it. So, yeah. So, you got my email address. If you need some help the first time, I'm here for you. Okay, now, number four, be sure to debubble your product inside of that jar. Some things you don't have to debubble. Some things that are, for example, when I can lemon juice, there's no air pockets. But anything that has solid with juice, you want to take your debubbler and you'll see them little bubbles on the sides of the jar. Turn it all around. And stick that debubbler in and just bring it up and down, up and down. Make sure that you get them out because if you don't, and if you have put too much in the jar and you don't have that head space that is needed for that pressure to build up inside, it'll blow that cap off or it may make the jar burst. That's inside the canner, so don't get nervous about what I just said about something blowing off, it's not going to blow the lid off the canner. It may blow the lid off of the jar. Okay? So, make sure you have, uh, you follow directions in your canning book. And make sure that you leave the proper amount of head space. Another thing you need to do is you need to Pack it down as tight as you can. Don't be afraid. Especially when you're putting things like fruit, soup, greens, meat, that's going to shrink once it's canned. Press it down as far as you can so you don't have about this much space of pure liquid at the bottom and then your food is up here. But if you pack it down real tight, your, your jars will come out beautiful. Okay? All right. Don't screw the bands on tight. I've seen a video of the lady who's going, mm. you just want to do them finger tight. Somebody emailed me a tip or they put it in my comments and they said, I'm just going to use this for example. They said, just screw it on just enough so that you can lift up the jar and it won't come off with your fingers. You don't have to do this with your ring that's on, the, you know, the lid goes on first and then the ring. You don't keep doing like this because you will have no way for it to expand or escape any air. You just do it like this, finger tight. Does that make sense? Very good. That is number six. Number seven, when you're canning, and let's say you're using little pint jars. And you have two stacks of them. There is a, uh, a rack that comes with your canners. I don't know about Presto, but I know All American Canner has two of them. So you're going to put one. Here's the bottom of the canner. Here's, this is the fire. And here's your canner sitting here. Everybody got the visual? And inside your canner, you want to put that rack because you don't want the heat to come in contact, direct heat from the canner to come in contact with the jars. They will crack. So you put the rack there, then you put your jar, and now if you have, I'm going to use my mouse. If you're using pints, you're going to put another rack on top, and then on top of that rack, you'll put another pint. Does that make sense? Don't put glass on top of a lid, a metal lid. Everybody with me? Presto has one rack. Very good. Thank you, Trinity 48. So if you have a Presto and it has one rack, you can take your a dish towel, fold it up a couple times. You can use two. Put it right on top of the lids of the jar of the first row. Towel then the next row of jars. Thank you so much. I'm glad you mentioned that, Trinity. But All American will give you two racks. And if you're lucky or blessed to have two different canners, you can interchange those um, racks. Okay? 
Very good. Let's move on to number seven. That was number seven. Number eight is almost the same as number seven. When you're storing your jars on a shelf, and I see this a lot in, in uh, videos and pictures, do not store jars on top of each other. Pretend this is a jar and this is a jar. That can interrupt the seal, they say. I believe it, so I never do it. Don't do it. You can build, you can buy shelves or just build more, add more shelves for pints or just get more shelving units, but they say don't store them on top of each other. I'm going to put one in here that I didn't think about and just came to my head. Some people, an old-fashioned way of canning, they take their jars and they turn them upside down. And then they, if it does a leak, they think it's sealed. But some people don't take off the band. You all know what the bands are. you got the metal lid and then you have the band. So if you leave the band on and you turn it upside down, it's not going to leak. The way you check for leaks is to take the band off. And you don't, and that leads me to number nine. Number eight was don't start, uh, store stack jars. Number nine was don't touch the jars for 24 hours. I know you're going to get like the first time you're going to be excited. And you're going to go and look at them. And I like, to, I like to look at them, watch them boil. But I don't touch them. And then you want to put a towel on top of them that'll keep the warmthness there and you'll start hearing those pings when they're canning don't lift it up before the 24-hour period and you know you get excited you want to see if it's leaking you want to push it down and, and force it into can you will have a faulty seal leave them undisturbed for 24 hours they can still seal after during that 24-hour period here we are on number 10. Wash your jars. After the 24 hours is up, take your band off, run you some soapy dishwasher, take you a sponge, clean all around it. Because if you don't, anything that seeped out or any liquid that may have been on your hands or when you were tightening them up, it will start mold. It won't affect what's inside the jar, but it can look nasty. And some people store their goods in like an underground uh, coal house or a shed outside if they live in warmer clients, uh, climates and you can attract rodent, rodents from licking and eating around there, that jar. I know it sounds gross, but it can happen, okay. Another thing is um, some people leave the rings on. I don't because I want to make sure that everything is sealed because you should go back every two or three months and do inventory to see what you have. Check your seals because it may have sealed for two months and then all of a sudden it stops sealing. But you will know if your product is contaminated because when you, and I know a lot of you think that you're going to say, oh, you can see it. Some botulism you can't see. Okay? But when you take that seal off, and I've done this on a live demonstration. And for those of you that are new to my channel, I have also canned live during the chat. And took my viewers along, my subscribers along, step by step. But when you take, uh, I don't have a, a lid opener. Some people have them. I just take a little spoon and I just gently lift up that lid and you'll hear it go, boom. Not that, not that strong. It's like a pop, like a pop. And you hear the air coming out. You will know that your seal was intact and the pressure was still inside of the jar. If you take that jar off and you don't hear anything, don't need it. 
If you have canned something and within a 24 hour period it didn't seal, you can reprocess it and seal it again, or you could take it out and put it in the jar because those jars are freezer, uh, can be used for freezing. However, most of them have a line, a line where uh, you shouldn't go past because when you freeze food, what happens? It expands. So you can't put it all the way up to that one inch head space when you're freezing. You have to put it down a little bit lower, about another inch. But if two day, if more than 24 hours have gone by and you didn't catch your product that didn't seal, throw it away. You don't want to risk your health or your loved one's health. It's not worth it. I have a real sensitive stomach. And what some people are able to drink a lot of water for a little mild food poisoning, I can't. So I don't take chances. And as long as I've been doing this, I don't have problems anymore. As long as you follow all of these tips. And let me share this with you. I'm in some Facebook canning groups and it's some evil people out here that try to scare the hell out of people so that they won't can so that they can have a skill all to themselves. Don't be afraid to can. The canners are now built where if you look at your gauge and once it reaches between 10 and 11 for your altitude and you put the weight on it and then you process it, let's say it's meat, 75 minutes for pints, 90 minutes for anything that has meat in it for quarts, 75 minutes for pints. Once you have processed it for the, that amount of time and you turn the electric or the gas off, that gear gauge is going to go down from 11, between 10 and 11, depending on your altitude. It's going to go all the way down to zero. As long as you don't take that top off of that pressure canner while there is pressure, any number between 11 and zero, it is impossible for it to grow to blow up because it'll go all the way down to zero. Then you take your, I think it's called toggle for Presto canners. I'm not sure what they're called. And they're called weights for all American canners. You take that off, you're gonna hear just a little hissing sound with the just the remnant of a little pressure bubbling up in that canner. And after that, there's no pressure. There's no way in the world it's going to blow up. People that blow up canners are people that turn it up real high, put the weight on, walk away, and don't keep the pressure at 10 or 11. They let it go into the danger zone of 20, and then it blows up. Or they try to open up the top before the pressure escapes, before the gear gauge goes down to zero. So don't be afraid, people. Don't be afraid. It's not going to blow up. Regulator. Thank you, Ebony Queen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, daughter, don't hide the... Uh, the, the comment, just take the person out. Okay? When we get these demons to come in there, just take them out. I trust you. Anybody that has a wrench, that's a moderator. Don't put them in time out. You don't need my approval. Take them out. Because there's people that are sitting in their mama's basement eating cheese sandwiches. And they have nothing to do. And they come in here where we all are learning things and sharing knowledge. And then they start talking about demons and stuff. So... <laughs> Thank you, Ebony Queen. Yes, sometimes I can't remember. I have a press, though. It's real old, but I don't use it. I don't use it. I don't even know why I still have it, but I don't use it because it's real, real old. Okay, there is another one. Michael Bryant, yes. Take them out. Take them out, guys. And when they start talking about the size of their personal anatomy, those are the ones that are that have an issue. Let me just say that. <laughs> okay. Any questions about 
Can I put a pressure can on an electric hot plate? No, ma'am. It doesn't get hot enough. And while I'm on this, those of you that have um, glass top, uh, you know what I'm trying to say, uh, stoves, a lot of them can't take some canners, especially the All-American, because they have a lot of weight. Do you pressure can soup, Klaus and World asks? That is my favorite thing, number two thing to can. Soup and greens with meat in it. Some videos say that is pressure cookers that pressure canners. Mm. Some videos say that is pressure cookers that pressure canners that broke up. I, I don't, I, it's a word or two in there missing. But as long as you do what I tell you to do, either with a pressure cooker for cooking, not for canning, as long as you let the pressure go all the way down, it will not broke up, break up. Yes, Clue fan, uh, cheese sandwich. They eat, they iron and cheese sandwiches on an ironing board. It's, <laughs> I visualize them <laughs> in their mama's basement, and they come in there try to upset us. And really, it's a joke. Okay, any questions, guys, about the canning? Checking on my jars now. Yeah, jars have gone up. Check check your uh, uh, Ace Hardware, Amish stores, if you live in rural areas. Local, uh, local hardware stores. But the, your main place is like Walmart, eBay, Amazon. Uh, all those places have gone up on prices. So check your little local places. Okay, I'm looking for questions. Tractor supply. Yes, Michelle. That's what I was trying to think of. I don't I heard about Wegmans or Wegmans or however you say it, but I don't I don't have any in this area. Uh, somebody said they saw some at Lowe's yesterday. Thank you, uh, Proverbs 31. Okay. Martha Howard giving a, a advice. Yes, I always tell people to use uh, canning salt because it's not iodized. So the reason why you use canning salt is so that your jars don't get cloudy. And by the way, that reminds me of another tip. Lead Farmer had a really good idea of taking that nail polish uh, pumper or whatever you want to call it to put the vinegar in so that you can wipe the jars off with vinegar, especially if you're dealing with anything that has oil and sugar in it. I use a little bowl, and I make sure that my paper towel is clean before I uh, I use a, a clean piece of paper towel every time I dip it in the vinegar, okay? Like that. But after you have canned something over and over, your jars will get a little cloudy. Put vinegar every time you can. That's what I do with that little bowl of vinegar. I put that in the canner, and that'll prevent your um, uh, jars from getting cloudy. I'm talking about cloudy inside the glass, not the content of the food. But getting back to the Himalaya salt and the iodized salt, the reason why you want to use Himalaya or pickling salt is because... The iodine that they use to keep the uh, salt from clumping together will make your food cloudy. Okay? So like if you're doing pickles and you have a cloudy brine or you're just uh, water packing green beans and it looks cloudy, it's because they use the wrong type of salt. So I get that big old jar up, uh, box of pickling salt and I keep it in a plastic bag on top of it. Okay. Okay, good. You put vinegar. Another thing, how many of you have done soup or greens or something and it, it because your bands are not supposed to be super tight and the air escaped and a little food juice came out with it too. And you keep canning over and over in that canner. And sometimes you will have mineral deposits from your water and from that food. Take oil. And when you're cleaning the inside of your, your canner, you'll get that ring out. That's another tip. Vinegar in the water and oil 
and uh, kosher salt, I don't know. Real salt and make sure that it doesn't have any additives in it to keep it from clumping like iodine. I really don't know about kosher salt. Somebody said, can you use kosher salt? It's pickling. I don't know. I don't know Lazy Liz Life and Ebony Queen. Read the ingredients. But pickling salt, man, I'll tell you, you get a box of that, it'll last about five to ten years. I've been having mine about... Wow, I retired uh, six years ago, and I bought it before I retired. But I have kidney disease, so I don't use a lot of salt. So I just put a little bit in mine. So that's probably why I, probably why I have mine for such a long time. Thank you, Michelle. No iodine in kosher salt. Hey, Teresa Davis, how you doing? Okay, so now we've asked. That's see, that's see. That's why I love these chats because hi, Janice, you did make it. Can you store your canning jars in the garage? Yes, ma'am. That's one, one thing about canning. You don't have to worry about the power going off and all that. Unless you live in a real, real hot climate, I wouldn't put it in the garage if it didn't have any air conditioning. No, I told you all, I took a guest room and I changed it into a, a pantry, which is my canning goods stuff. And then this side is the grow room. One day I'll take you back in there. But I have an old video where I showed everything in the room. But uh, somebody asked me to take them in there. Uh, not too long ago, and I told him no, because I got too much junk in there. Thank you, Inez. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you, Tia. Thank you for coming in. Okay, now is the time. If you have a YouTube channel, please put your zone and just say yes, because they got your channel name. Like, for example, Turf Therapy. Yes, you're right, Turf. Check the local hardware stores. Um, back home, they have a Menards. It's a big box store. It's kind of like Home Depot, and they have them there back home. So right now, please put your zone, garden zone. Somebody said Macy's got one and Target. Baby, they don't have them here in Texas. But um, put where you are, and yes, if you have a... Um, YouTube channel. So I want everybody to start checking out these other people. Mama, sister, daughter, I told you about in the beginning of the uh, chat. Best Yet Journey, Zone 8A, like me. Living Miracle Homestead, Zone 9B. Green Organic Love out there in California, 9B. Clawson World in Zone 7. Somebody said check Big Lots. Only thing about big lots is a lot of times they have refurbished stuff. So be careful. Make sure it's not refurbished. Unless you want to take that chance. Uh, Lazy Liz said, yeah, in Florida, she wouldn't put her jars in the garage. I wouldn't put mine in there. Best Yet Journey. She is doing great things. Best Yet Journey is doing canning. Zone 8A. Okay, if I've skipped anybody, you all can go back and look at this. Lady Led. Oh, you hear? Hey, Lady Led. Oh, if somebody just said that. Hey, just getting checked. Yeah, I talked about mama, sister, daughter, Lady Led. You late. I gave her a 10-minute plug on her, on her canning videos. Wonderful. But good that you're in here visiting us. Garden of Eden, stock pots work. Yeah, I, I mentioned that earlier. You don't have to have a, per se, a water bath canner. You can use a large stock pot. If you don't have a rack to put on the bottom of, of it, remember I said use a towel, dish towel. Okay. So I think we talked about everything that I wanted to talk about. Remember next week I won't be having... Um, a live chat about gardening. I'm going to introduce my products to you. I'm going to be offering free shipping uh, throughout the site. And I'll tell you a little bit more about my background. Uh, yeah, but just check all over for those canning uh, supplies. Because in different states, you know, some of them have them, some of them don't. Okay? Yeah, you must have a pressure canner to pressure can. You can't use a large stock pot uh, to pressure can. Pressure can, canning is completely different. 
okay okay guys i'm gonna let you guys go early tonight i really appreciate you tuning into my live the fellas you might not want to be here next week but hey if you want to come in and and listen to my products and have your sweetie or your wife next to you uh you're welcome we're not excluding you so uh but i will have my next gardening chat let me look at the calendar here on the 24th of august and on the 17th i'm going to introduce you to my product line and the the, the site will be available on the 20th for pre-ordering somebody emailed me and asked me was i going to do out live live samples in the area but not uh not online because um to be honest with you um this is this these products are not new I've been making them since 1992. I launched my line in 2005. And as I said, I stopped selling them because I got sick and I had to have major surgery. So it's nothing new. Um, and I am not doing any type of loans, grants. Um, I'm just using my savings and I got all that tied up in this. So I'm only using natural and organic ingredients. So I'm not gonna be mailing out samples i don't really i don't hope i don't sound too cocky or whatever you want to say but i don't really feel like i have to because i already have a clientele okie dokie thank you all so much as always i'd like to tell you guys that you know that god loves you and i love you too good night everybody god bless you Bye now.